Egunon Danori, eh, buenos días a todos y bienvenidos a Good morning to everybody and welcome to those of you that have come from other regions. To all people who come from other countries from Europe. Eh, bueno, eh, compromiso empresarial por la FP Dual. Eh, permitirme empezar un poco en contextualizar eh, con FEBAS y la formación profesional. Quizá un ámbito donde quizá públicamente no se nos identifica de igual modo a otros ámbitos de actuación, sobre todo en el ámbito de las relaciones Por ejemplo, estamos normalmente detrás de la business promotion, pero Confibask y VET han estado en contacto en los últimos 25 años, porque creemos que VET es una parte estratégica de la competitividad de la prosperidad de nuestro país. Confibask fue una de las empresas de proyectos de proyectos. Confibask fue una de las empresas de proyectos de proyectos de proyectos in 1893. By 1988, we'd already underscored the need to broach VET in a decisive fashion. I'll explain to you a little bit so why um, basically uh, the uh, actually the industrial reconversion that actually led to the disappearance of apprenticeship schools. This didn't happen uh, just to uh, companies, but to the whole of the industrial fabric. From Since 1991, we've been working closely with the Basque government to jointly set up a VET system. As I said, we've been collaborating since 1991. Confibusque in 1996 started getting involved in international mobility for VET students. And since 2005, we've been involved in dual VET. So the business world is very, very uh, proud of uh, the VET system that we have here in the Basque country. And personally, as a representative of Confibusque, I have to say that I'm very proud. We're we're all very proud of being loyal uh, collaborators and real collaborators uh, of the Basque country, and in this case, the Deputy Minister for VET, Mr. Jorge Arelava. Because at the end of the day, we've given uh, VET to around 200,000 youngsters since we started this collaboration. They've gone through different uh, uh, companies. They've been apprenticeships. They've had a workplace experience. We're talking about 11,000 students per year from 147 Different, different technical colleges and 7,700 companies. We've also taken over 3,000 youngsters abroad to get their uh, foreign experience, not just in uh, companies that are located abroad, but also Basque companies that are abroad. So the Basque VET system. We feel what's important about all of this is the shared aim that we have. And what is that shared aim? It's to respond to the needs of fast companies flexibly and, and head those needs off and be there before they actually uh, emerge. So together with the Regional Ministry for Education and the Deputy Regional Ministry for VET, we carried out a uh, in-depth survey of the future skills needs of our companies. What we did was so uh, we asked companies to talk to us about uh, their needs in 2017, 2018 and 2019 and they came back to us by saying that uh, around half of their new skills needs would uh, or should be covered by VET and around 66% of the VET that they need is from the manufacturing sector. So there's a, this alignment between VET students, companies, tech schools, we try to align them all and to improve that relationship in an ongoing format. I'll talk later about the dual VET, but what about the VET in general, the Basque VET, how we see it? I'm sure Jorge, who's the man with all the facts and figures, 
and apart from being a great deputy minister for VET, he's um, uh, a guy who's passionate of this, will give us the facts and figures in his presentation. But there are some things that we could uh, say, and uh, things that uh, we've seen have happened over the last 25 years. Firstly, and that's, this is a bit second in the chart, which, but it's the consensus and the collaboration between all the different stakeholders. It's important that there's consensus, and there is consensus in the Basque Country around the fact that VET is a vital. It's uh, a business, a political, uh, an institutional consensus. And this is basic here, because... Because it's a strategic part of Confebasc, and then the collaboration between two of the different, all the different stakeholders. That's the government, uh, companies, us, and tech schools. We all work together, and we saw that in the survey that we carried out. We we proved that it was there, and we're always working on improving it. Because at the end of the day, we've got something in common, which is to meet the needs of companies flexibly and as early as possible. Because what we want to do is to offer a bright future to many of the Basque youngsters. But another basic principle which is by no means easy, which is to build on what's already there. I always say that as a result of the economic crisis in Confibasque, virtually all the diplomatic uh, offices that are in Spain have come to visit us because when Spain was on the verge of being uh, bailed out, we, um, we had uh, less than half the unemployment level of the rest of Spain, less school dropouts, double the GDP. And so people came to ask to us, uh, to see us and ask us why. And we said, well, because in the 1980s we'd already been through a crisis and we decided that we wanted to carry on being in a manufacturing nation with a competitive economy, we decided that we needed the VET. And secondly, because we've built on what we already have. We haven't reinvented the wheel. We haven't just changed things because the government changed or policies changed. We're now in the fourth uh, Basque VET plan, and we're now just about now thinking about the fifth one. So the idea is to build on what's already been there. I always visualize the country like it's in a bar chart, which you just sort of add to. But it's always the same bar, but it just needs adding to it, just needs going up. And for us, this is something that's obvious, but actually it's very difficult to achieve in other fields. And these three other principles, which include proximity to companies I've already spoken about, the public-private collaboration, what I mean by that is that we have a fantastic relationship with the Basque government and also with different technical school associations, whether they be for the private or the public or the state sector. It's like the image of all being in a boat together and all rowing in the same direction because that's good for students, for companies and for tech schools. And then the business commitment, which is proven by that. And what about our axes? The axes that have formed a part of all these, this growth and this construction, which includes training, i.e. adapting to what is needed, I'm so sure Jorge will talk about new digital contents, applied innovation. Of course, VET schools are like innovation uh, centers for the surrounding areas and especially for the surrounding SMEs that are out there. Entrepreneurship. Many, many of the small companies that exist today originate in uh, VET schools. Yesterday, it was 50, the 50th anniversary from the Arms uh, Tech College in Eibar. So in places like Eibar, Mondragon and Bergara, many small companies have come out of tech schools. 
And then, of course, internationalisation. We all need to have our antenna out there to look at what's going on in the rest of the world. And that is true for uh, VET as well. So, in Confibask, we uh, feel we're part of VET, Basque VET. What's the current challenge? Well, fortunately, we're now emerging from an unprecedented crisis and we're emerging into an unknown world. And of course, what, the only thing that is constant is change, and that means that VET can by no means be a static, hermetic, silo type of system. So our challenge that we also share and that we also work on and that we try to find a response to through consensus, through the collaboration of all stakeholders, that's the government, tech schools, associations, private companies and ourselves, is that we need to head to industry 4.0. If we as a country accept that we're a manufacturing nation, we're an industrial nation, then we're going to have to get into Industry 4.0 because our future depends upon it in the same way that our future in the 1980s and 1990s depended on that. So we're always thinking about our future and fortunately we're all working together to build that future. When I talk about Industry 4.0, I'm talking about digital companies, new professional profiles that have to reply to new needs, to needs that never existed in the past. And what we're trying to do together is pinpoint those needs and and get apprentices for at least three months, just a very brief period of three months for uh, 11,000 students is what helps uh, dual VET. And let's move on now to dual VAT. This is something that we started uh, talking about, those of us that are here in the room, all those stakeholders, back in 2005. Uh, between 2005 and 2009, we started working on uh, a specific project. In 2011, the crisis really hit, although the true crash was 2008. But right in 2011, right in the middle of the crisis, right in the middle of recession, we once again detected the need to change a training we needed on-site learning rather than classroom learning in 2011-2012. Of course, we needed to analyze and study different experiences in the same way in the government at the beginning of the crisis looked at different models. We spent a lot of time traveling to different regions, traveling around Europe and see, see what's out there. Then in 2012-2003, in that academic year, that's when uh, SEB was born. Just a few characteristics that we feel are a form of vital part of our dual VET. Firstly, it's a model that's both been adapted from others, but it's our own model. I.e. we didn't copy anybody, we've seen what they've got and we've adapted to what our needs are, because you have a, a certain specific kind of business fabric here, you have a certain kind of company, so you can't just cut and paste, copy and expect that to be a, a magic recipe in your country. But it's good to look and see what others got. So we adapt ourselves permanently or in an ongoing fashion to um, be as flexible as possible. Of course, tech schools are the leaders. They play an important role, but they're also aligned and very sensitive to the need of their companies, such as us. And this is something that we uh, always have in mind. Consensus, as I said previously, if we need to all move together jointly by building on what's already out there, not reinventing the wheel. And this is actually what you're seeing in many other, year, other places. When there's a change of government, they start reinventing the wheel. 
uh, and they go back to zero again. And it's a shame. We're open to all the different sectors, all the different uh, professional fields. Of course, that means we're, all, although we're an industrial um, country, of course, we're open to the service sector. We're open to the sector of trade because the future's out there and because youngsters in the Basque country are few and far between and they're going to come even fewer and further between. So if you've got a youngster at home, you need to, to value that person. Once again, the next uh, characteristic for me is concentrating on this contractor for the training and apprenticeship. We, companies that are involved in dual VET, are fully committed to it if, and committed to the idea of a contract. If we can't get a contract, well, an internship. But of course, we pay 100% uh, all our trainees. Companies, of course, they're offering training, they're offering a training internship. But apprentices, in the historic uh, sense of the word, always uh, formed a part of companies. I used to work as an uh, apprentice, and of course, I always had a labor contract. And they form part of the company, they're producing things. We've got a, an employment rate amongst the youngsters in the Basque country that is far lower than the rest of Spain, and that's because many students are in a dual VET, so then they're no, not really students or the unemployed, they're actually being paid and paying uh, Social Security. And right from the word go, uh, they are offered a contract, they uh, are paid, and they make their social security contributions, obviously. For us, it's important to offer contracts and to pay. Uh, this is one of the fundamental characteristics. And what are the advantages of all of this? Well, firstly, you have got skilled, adaptable, uh, workers, right from the word go, you know about the company's culture, the way the company works. So the skilled staff that you get through VE3, it's a way of uh, choosing and attracting talent because you get the chance to see uh, these apprentices for two or three years. You get to see whether they're good at their specialization. And what you do is you get in your company very motivated youngsters who end up forming part of your company. They are people that collaborate and co are committed to uh, the future. And we give society and youth the, this image, this image of a, a company that trains, a company that pro provides opportunities. How have things have progressed since 2012 when officially the dual VAT started? I'm sure Jorge will be giving uh, facts and figures of schools and of students. Or my job is to talk about uh, the number of companies in, involved. We started out in 2012, 2013, 13 with just about 100 companies. There are now nearly 800 for this. And we're hoping by next year to get over 1,000 companies involved. And if we follow mm, the same tack that we've followed so far, 80% of those companies will be SMEs. Because we're talking here about small, medium-sized companies, a whole chain, a whole set of uh, little companies that are going to need skilled workers. I personally believe that they should be paid and that they are well paid. And there's for the appraisal that the students make of their time at the company. 
Well, 98% say that it's been productive and efficient for the company, and 99.6% consider that it's a good model. They like the system. This is the uh, what companies say about the students that they receive. That's why I started my talk saying that we are really very impressed with the EVET that we have. What are the challenges out there? I think we need to carry on along this same uh, line. We are going to carry on collaborating loyally and professionally with the government, with the uh, VET schools to improve and design different course contents to head, as uh, somebody earlier said, towards Industry 4.0. I mentioned the survey that we carried out regarding the future needs for skills. Well, we're going to have to take a, a close look at that to see that things can move forward and that in the future we actually carry on growing. We're not so worried about the numbers, the, the figures from a business viewpoint because we feel from a business uh, viewpoint we are going down the right road. What we're worried about is having sufficient youngsters to cover our needs because half of our growth, we, as we said previously, is going to need a VET graduates. So. 75% of the jobs that are available in manufacturing are jobs that require VET students, dual VET students or traditional VET students. We also need to train new instructors, new tutors. Uh, of course, there I've uh, written up legal and uh, technical advice. We need to improve the contracts that we offer, adapt them as well, and carry on certifying this vocational training. And I'm going to finish from the viewpoint, not so much of VET, but from the university's view, because I think we are making right, the correct progress also in dual VET. And for the first time, I now feel that universities are more sensitive towards uh, a system that's actually more company linked to this dual VET. But universities, I think, are beginning to realize that they need this. And so we've got a now, now got a university bar strategy. We uh, members there of this strategy, and we're hoping to extrapolate what we've learnt from uh, vocational education and training into the university, this idea of a dual university, of uh, pioneers opening the way. As I said previously, from the viewpoint of the private sector in the Basque Country, if we've got 50% uh, students uh, in VET, 25% university students of these, six are going to be engineers, mm, two or three have uh, studied business studies and the odd one or two uh, will have studied law, but they're going to have to maybe reskill or upskill. So, that's why we are here. We uh, are committed to VET, that's a fact. We uh, are loyal and collaborate with the Basque government, and I'd like to reiterate how proud we are of VET. We're very happy by the fact that we've got this far. And if we've got this so far, then hopefully we'll be able to broach the challenges that await us in the future. Thank you very much for listening.